All right, the exercise we're going to show you, key coaching points to, is a triphasic standing horizontal hip variation. Um, it is by far the most transferable, transferable speed exercise in the weight room that I've ever seen carry over to running. Um, I've had people measure this themselves. Um, I didn't really measure it just because I saw the speed difference. So um, this is coming out of the Revolutions in Speed Training Clinic um, that we had online also if you're interested in looking at all the things in the speed clinic it was a uh, clinic that's being recorded so and i actually call this the yuri exercise for short instead of the standing horizontal hip um exercises because uh yuri shansky obviously was the uh i was looking at a series of exercises and he was using this and this person was actually flipped in the one I saw, but this is the best picture basically gave me the idea for this. And this is nothing. You don't need these. This is not the exercise, but anyway, um, there's three parts to the running phase. Um, one would argue one's a bad coaching position, but we'll, I'll talk you through and why I do it. But this is the most transfer exercises for speed using dynamic correspondence, the, the concept that uh, I've ever seen. So the triphasic standing horizontal hip variation, there's key factors in this. There's three foot positions for the three different exercises and it's just foot positions, okay? That's all it is. It's the same exercises with three foot positions. Foot placement, um, what you would wanna do is look up through a foot series um, on my YouTube page. And uh, on this video, I'll, I'll link the slides which will be below this on the video. Key coaching points to this, um, what what I'm going to give you to make sure this transfers for your athlete. Now, I, I'm going to show you this exercise. And again, it's the standing horizontal hip. This I think the first one is the pull. But I've seen people, I posted these videos about three weeks ago. They're already knocking them off. They're kind of doing them wrong, I would say, in my opinion. But maybe they got another reason for it. So, and they're not, and they're stealing them, and they're stealing them, and they don't have much knowledge. I find there's a lot of information on the internet, but not much knowledge to say the least. So this is the, the standing horizontal hip pull. I'll cover the coaching points, but I want you to, to watch this exercise live. Okay, now we're gonna pause it. Maybe I'll play it back slowly, just half speed so you can get a full view of this thing. There you go. There's a large band tension here. Athletes stabilizing with this, trying not to pull with upper body, but driving the hips through. Let's play it again. You can see that. So the key to this exercise, and maybe I'll come back to it, is the front foot placement, okay? So I'll talk about three foot positions. This one is the pull because this actually emulates a front, uh, an early foot strike. But it's, even though the foot's on the ground, you're gonna pull harder while your foot's in the air by doing this exercise to make sure that you have the foot strike underneath you upon running in the forward propulsion phase at top end speed. There's a line here and we'll cover the lines here. That's for the next exercise. And then we'll put a line back here later for the, the last, um, for the push. Uh, I think it's called the drive. And what is happening is you're just hitting all three of these foot positions with the combination of variation of this exercise. So let's get to, uh, so what we have here in the foot position you saw, and here's the three lines I'm talking about. This is the front position. So when you, when you start this exercise and do it in this position with your, your foot in the front position, okay, which is the pull, you're going to have a five to, or a 10 to 15 degree external rotation because we're kind of mimicking running here. Well, we are mimicking running if you didn't know that. So what we have then is your hands should be supinated and pronated, alternating to run to match the, uh, basically the contra, or uh, I'm sorry, the cross crawl concept, which I'm releasing a whole course eventually with Dan Fichter on that. And then, um, which we'll get into the final coaching points. Now, the key point is that you, horizontal projection. You don't want to let your athlete go up. And then we want to implement the thoracic tuck exercise. Um, and I'll get into that, but you're essentially pulling tension from your thoracic area 
to lock everything in. And I'm doing a YouTube video following this up in the next uh, day or two, and I'll post it and link it on this talk. Band tension, determine how fast the movements can be performed. So let me go back really quick. Again, pushing forward, driving, externally rotated foot to start. It may not finish externally rotated. Uh, and actually, if it finished internally each time, it's fine. But you want to get back to external rotation to start the pull. So again, driving forward, pushing, driving, you can feel that. So that's the pull. So you can see that position right there. Now, the one thing you don't want to do is have them jump up. You're driving. They may come up, but you don't want them pushing up. You want to push them forward. Okay, that's the right sequence that you want. Now, the next one is the banded thrust. So the first one was the pull. There's a thrust. There's a drive. The thrust is done in the second line. Okay, so we'll play that one. And you can see, let's, let's play half speed. As you drive, push. You can see there's a little bit better finish. Okay, bam, pushing his hips through. So this is a former athlete doing this. But you can see how the snap at the end there, everything is timed together. It Great carryover. Key factor to this one is, is almost the same as everything else. Thoracic tuck, band tension, supinated hands. But when you start, the foot is neutral. That's a neutral foot. Because in this position, your foot would be in neutral when you're running, okay, as it's rolling through internally. So that's a key factor. Again, neutral the whole time. If it internally rotates at the finish, it's okay. Don't coach your athletes out of it. Um, but when they come back and reset, it should almost naturally happen. So then the drive, here's the drive, and you can see how the foot position's back farther. Okay, let me uh, change the speed of this. We'll go back here. You can see that drive. You can see how much farther the hip, I'm sorry about that, that when they finish, they're pushed off. If you can get the heel at uh, 12 o'clock in this drill, that's a great thing. And don't, and you still want to be applying force, okay? Uh, in our Revelations of Speed Clinic, Chris Corpus will talk about this whole concept and how to get to that point, especially athletes. Now, I say this is the most uh, beneficial exercise for speed I've seen. And I'm going to tell you, most in the coaches that have, have uh, done it for me in their weight room and looked, and they would agree. Now, um, the key here with this, it may not help a world-class 10 flat 100 meter guy or less. Just may not help. But anybody besides that, this exercise is pretty amazing. So, and, and that's the difference. Like I, I see people going to world-class track coaches for, for speed stuff. And sometimes they, uh, they miss some things because they don't coach slow people. And, uh, other coaches who may not coach high school athletes that are slow and make them fast, um, they get more. I, I actually get more for them from, from my athletes. So the key here is I don't always pull from a world-class coach in speed because the things they, they have, uh, they have some amazing uh, athletes already. So the point is, is that you may have to find uh, methods for speed training and use different methods than a world-class sprinter. Um, I find that my non-world-class sprinters can do more volume than most world-class speed coaches prescribe. So there's the drive. And really, it's the same situation. It's just that at the fin you start with the foot internally rotated. And you finish with the foot internally rotated, okay? Um, and you're, again, all these exercises, you'll be trying to get on your big toe. Okay, pushing, finishing on your big toe. So that's definitely a... Uh, a key factor. Now, remember, the pole's in front with this foot position here. Um, the thrust is here, a little farther back, and the drive is way back. You can see that. So those are the key factors in this exercise, the most transferable one I've ever seen. Now, I put yielding isometrics. So we do this in our heavy strength phase, in our isometric phase and triphasic, and our eccentric phase. I will do an isometric position here for 10 seconds, five, whatever you deem, five to 10 seconds. The re-education of this position with this exercise, phenomenal. 
So remember, uh, you may want to take this link, and, and uh, uh, I'll probably link this on this exercise if uh, you get these slides. But remember, the first exercise, you start at external, okay? And you pull through the thrust where the foot was in the second position on the second exercise variation, neutral, and then internal on the drive. And then you can, uh, that's the three-way foot concept in most of my series where I do all my uh, feet position that way. And then integrated foot shift is how you roll through too. This is another uh, thing that is actually linked on this uh, PowerPoint. So you can take a look at that. Now, some other factors with this standing triphasic uh, horizontal hip variation. Um, if your ankle doesn't extend all the way back, if you know RPR, these are key fixes for this exercise. Hit the tib, reset, the arch reset, and the hamstring reset. Hamstring is tied into this whole thing, especially with the calf. Um, and actually, I should put the calf on there, but your calf here too. If your hips don't extend, hit your glutes, your lats, your hamstring, and then you can also do your QL, okay? And then side stability, if the athlete doesn't feel stable, they should with those upper arms. But if you see their hips shifting any direction, right or left, you definitely want to hit the arch, the glute, and the, actually the glute med reset, okay, which is in our level two courses. So those are fixes when you see problems that you just might not be able to coach an athlete through. So there we'll finish the uh, video and uh, have fun with this drill. And please email me if you want with any questions.